Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our aquarium overflow box build. We're getting this thing on well on its way to being done. Today we're going to work on the skimmer section of overflow box as well as finishing up all of our hardware part. Next thing after this will be part three where we plumb the unit. I'm going to show you a little bit about how these work in the next few sections. Uh, you have to your right, you have your skimmer box, which will be inside of your tank. This is the section we're building today. This is what gets your water into the overflow box. Your YouTube carries it over to the left, the back box. The back box will carry the water out to the sump where it'll be filtered, exchanged, and then sent back to the tank from your inlet. Uh, in this picture, you'll see that they have done a little extra and we're gonna work on doing this ourselves. On the YouTube, if you notice, they've got a small vinyl tube. This helps create the suction that you need to get the overflow actually working because you have to have a siphon through that U-tube from the front skimmer to the back box to carry the water over into the sump. So today we're gonna get this accomplished. I'm glad to have y'all back and let's get started with this build. Welcome back to part two. In this part, we're going to start gluing the panels together so we can get the, the whole piece assembled. Now, what I'm doing here first is I'm going to go ahead and get the front box, or not the front box, but the back box that's on the back side, on the outside of the fish tank, get it glued together. Then we're going to go and move back to the table saw and we're going to make our weir. We're going to take three pieces and we're going to cut our marks in so that way we have where the water can overflow into it and the fish can't get into it or you know get sucked up but essentially what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and get this part glued together like this I may go ahead and put the bottom on I'm not quite sure I think I'm going to wait and uh, actually glue the whole piece onto that backboard and we'll do that in another shot but what we're using to glue this together now I've showed it in other videos is actual acrylic glue it comes in this can just like so and let's see if I can get it in shot here all right and you can see this is actually to glue, glue acrylic together it comes with a little needle on the end and it will actually chemically bond this together. Now I'm sure there's going to be a easy. Uh, there's probably somebody out there that's got a, you know, idea of an easier way of this stuff getting held together as I'm doing it. But for safety's sake, I'm just going to line it up. Okay, so essentially y'all get the idea that I am gluing this together. Um, all you're going to do is just run a bead of that glue down the piece, the two pieces. And if you're looking down the glass, you'll see where the actual glue makes contact with it. We're just going to get it all glued together and set and move on to the next part. Alrighty, so now we're going to cut the lines in the front weir, the what's going to be on the inside. I've made lines here with a test piece I've done to where I want to stop these grooves coming down. Um, I've measured them every three-eighths of an inch all the way across and I'm going to just steadily run. Now I'm going to probably dodge this first one and this last one because that's getting a little close to the edge. I need room to glue the other plexiglass on. So I'm going to do a couple of these and then video will cut and then I'll uh, show you the finished product. Okay, so on cutting these panels, I'm going to tell you something now. Make sure that you've got a blade that has no carbide bits on it. Um, you're going to learn here in just a little bit why. Um, because it will knock your little teeth away from those grooves. Um, so make sure that you have a smooth blade, probably with more teeth than what I have on this one. 
Okay, so we got a little bit of an issue. The 3 eighths of an inch is fine, but if you ain't careful, when you go to pull that blade, pull it back off the blade, it tends to break teeth off. Luckily, you can, if this happens to you, I do have this plexiglass glue, and this will be black, so it's not really going to matter too much, but glue them back on, and they're back in place. I'm telling you this uh, plexiglass glue works really well, but I'm going to get the rest of these glued on here, paint this pit section black, and then uh, we'll get back to the piece up here that's got to be glued to the other section, but I just figured I'd give you all that warning first. I mean, if you want to go further between your gaps, that's fine. Um, this is just where I chose, and just don't get in a hurry and this won't happen so okay so now we have the inside panels for our weird uh, cut out what I'm gonna do take a small file I'm gonna go in behind inside of these and clean up all the rough stuff we're also going to take and uh, we're going to paint this black. Also, on top of that, we've got to sand it a little bit. Kind of not, nothing strong. You don't want to see all the, all the bad scratches. The paint will hide most of that. So, and yes, I know why I use clear plexiglass when you're going to have to paint it anyway. Well, we don't want to see you know the water flowing into it and settled up in inside the tank. So, what I'm going to use. Krylon Fusion all-in-one paint. I've used this on everything <clears throat> from in the tank ornaments. Uh, I've used it on egg laying slates that I make. Uh, and it, after it dries, it's completely non-toxic. I've got one slate that's been in a tank probably about six months. Fish are still alive. Babies are still alive. Nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary so the Krylon Fusion works great but uh, what we're going to do we're going to sand these down get them cleaned up and get them mounted to this now I can go ahead and show you this on Amazon $11 it is a clear YouTube this is what goes on the back side of the tank all the plumbing's not been attached or nothing um, this will go here this will be in the front side of the tank. This is what's going to draw water from the inside of the tank, send it over into the back side. Now, I've got to go in and I've already cut some little pieces, the small pieces that I'm going to put on each side of this U, this uh, YouTube. And you may ask, why have I only got one? Well, this setup is big enough to run a 150 gallon tank. Um, that's what I took the measurements off of, but I'm putting it on a 60 gallon tank. So what I'm doing is leaving my options open. So if later on I decide to use this on a different tank, bigger, then I know it'll work up to 150 gallon. I'm sure it'll work over something bigger, but I can add another YouTube in here right beside of it to uh, double the flow going in. So what I could do, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this YouTube here as you can see, mount it, and then I'll be able to, if I need to upgrade, I'll be able to bolt or put another YouTube here. One tube coming in here, or coming out here, and one tube coming out here for going back to the sump. So, for now, I'm going to set this off to the side, and uh, we'll get these cleaned up real quick. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to get this uh, all cleaned up, sanded. But here's a little bit of insight on a mistake that I made. Obviously, this is the first time I'm doing this, so it's experimental at best. Um, do not paint your pieces before you glue them together. I made that mistake. The glue, one, will peel the paint off of the pieces, and two, there'll be little paint bits in 
you know on the edges of these pieces so when the glue contacts them it hinders the glue from holding properly I had to clean these pieces all back up respray them so that's the best thing to do is just leave that part alone until the box that side of the weir is put together then spray it uh, second you don't have to sand but the one side um, sand the flat side if you look at each side you'll see where there's a groove that your blade well it was trying to continue on so it kind of just runs down don't sand that side put that side to the inside uh, and just paint your flat side So here's where the actual weir pieces are going together. Um, and like I said, you can see that I've already painted these things in this section of video, but I just wanted to have it in here so y'all could see those pieces going together. Also, you can see I have the bottom piece in my hand. So what I've done is I mismeasured those bottom sections because I want them to the inside of the actual three pieces. So what I had to do is end up scoring a section uh, after I got the three pieces put together, leaned the bottom up against it, scored on the inside, and cut that little extra off so the piece would fit up inside the other three pieces uh, good and flush. So just make sure that you double, triple, quadruple check your measurements um, and don't get in a hurry because you can mess up it's not called a failure if you do but you can mess up so that's the whole purpose of this channel is to learn from my mistakes um, but also at the same time we learn together Okay y'all, so the actual construction is complete, all that's left is just the plumbing um, and I changed my mind on a few things. I'm not putting the adjusters in here because I've put this on the tank since then. It sets in the perfect location, the only thing I had to do was at the bottom right here I added a piece of plexiglass, I spread it a little bit to get over the outside of the the rim and it'll keep it just at the proper place away from the um, away from the wall you know lined up just perfectly uh, obviously you'll have to do different whenever you're doing it um, but I will tell you this much <laughs> be sure to definitely leak test this thing before you uh, say you're done with it I had two holes in the same spot on identical sides that didn't have not a stitch of glue in them and they were leaking I mean pouring out like a, a waterfall so make sure that you leak test them just to make sure that you know you're not gonna have a floor full of water but other than that it's done and so is part two um, make sure you like and subscribe come back for part three where I'm going to actually plumb the system I think I'm gonna go ahead and order another one of these YouTubes and I'm gonna order a second bulkhead um, that way I've got it already set up for it I'm not gonna use it yet but it'll already be set up for it but uh, y'all have a good one and uh, we'll catch y'all on the next one